Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff. You might notice my Phantom 6 is missing from the rack over there. That's because it's actually right here. And we're going to use it to recreate the classic Dance Force Smash by one of my favorite, well, no, not one of my, my favorite band, Underworld. Today, we're going to recreate Dark Train. Dark Train was released in 1994, and it was probably the first anthemic song that Underworld released. It was just a huge, huge dance floor smash. And the sounds in it are readily available because they used simple, basic, off-the-shelf synthesizers for most of the sounds. The drum machine is a 909, the main melodic hook is a Juno 106, so these types of sounds are readily available and they're almost all Roland. Uh, being Underworld, the song sounds really simple, but it's deceptively simple. If you actually start to work into what's inside it, uh, particularly the bass line, gets really complex. Um, and trying to recreate it takes a, a lot of effort. I found when I've been covering most Underworld songs that they seem really simple and easy to do, but once you get into it, it's, it's really <laughs> complex at times. So let's get into Dark Train by Underworld and recreate it on the Roland Phantom. Now I'm doing this on a Phantom 6. I could be doing it on the Phantom 06 just as easily. Uh, you could do this on pretty much any synthesizer that has any kind of sequencer. We could be doing it on Montage or Modiax for that matter. Or you could be doing this in Ableton or you could even do it with a looper if you wanted to. So let's get into Dark Train. So I started out by picking some sounds. Now I'm not going to go over the sounds that I picked and why I picked these sounds, but I have several different ones that I've got in here. And to start with, we have a pad, which is a bright pad for that, uh, that anthemic kind of a sound. Uh, a square lead I picked for the bass sounds. The choir I picked for that it's kind of like a vocal awe uh, sample sound. And then, uh, I don't know what this is, some kind of JP8, um, Jupiter 8 sound that I picked for, uh, which kind of plays uh, over top at times. But for this, we have to go down to zone 10, which is our drum zone. The most important part, the driver of this track is the TR-909, and I picked a compressed version of this. To start with this, we're going to go into the pattern editor. Now, I do have the bass line already recorded in here. I'm not going to record this. I will go over that in a minute, and I'll explain why, because it, it's fairly complex. But to start with, uh, in the pattern sequencer, we're going to start with pattern, uh, the first one, and we're going to use TRX for this one. So let's just put a bass drum in there. Nice kick. Let's see what we're going to use for this kick. I think that 909's kick sounds good. So for the sequencer, we're just going to put that on the downbeat. So now we should hear... So let's go back to our pattern sequencer and we're going to utility and we're going to copy that and then we're going to paste it into here. So now we've got that in this one as well. Let's edit this one. Oh, I can't because I'm in the pattern utility. So now let's edit this one. So now we want to add hi-hats. So we've got a closed and an open hi-hat that we're going to put in there. We're going to put the closed hi-hat on the downbeats. And the open high hats we'll put on every other beat. So let's do that and see how that sounds. Let's go back and once again, we're gonna select that one, pattern utility that, we're gonna copy it. And then we're gonna copy that into the next slot down. Okay, so let's edit this third one we've copied in. We have the sim symbol in there, so let's add a clap. So we'll go into our TR rec and let's find a clap. We'll put that on the second and fourth downbeats. So now we should have that clap in there. All right, good. And the last one we wanna do, so let's copy this one more time. And we'll copy and paste it down to there. Edit it one more time. 
and we're going to add rim shots and we will put that in these here and here all right so that's a very basic version of the drums this actually does get a little bit more complicated where the claps uh on if we expand this beyond one length so we got two sets of bars in there uh, the claps actually double up a little bit and there's a little bit of echo and so on but we're not going to do that in here we're just going to get a basic beat but now we have the ability to play play bass just a kick add in the cymbals Okay, so now we've got that. Let's have a look at the bass line. I also did the bass line in the TR Rec just because it's a really complex one. So it is two, uh, let me bring that up. So it's just two B flats in octaves, but um, the timing is kind of strange. And if you have a look, you can see um, I've, I've got it in sixteenths and it's across uh, two bars. So you can see the sixteenth notes let me put a, an image of what that is that I put in here as a pattern so you can get an idea of, of what it is doing. So it took me quite a while to put that one in there, which is why I'm not going to try and do it again now because uh, you'd be bored watching me do this and get it wrong. But basically, now if we go back to our pattern sequencer and we can just play this one. So let's have a look and see in our edit here, if we go into square lead, so let's edit the zone edit for that one. We can see we have, uh, I've edited the resonance and the cutoff for this because the, uh, and I shortened up the decay and the release just because the original sound it was a little bit too long and, and drawn out. So let's have a look at the reverb sound, which is already off. So I'm not sure. Oh, it's the echo. I do have effects set up for this. So if we go into uh, effects edit, you can see that for zone two, we're going into some insert effects and I've got a delay on here. So if we listen to that. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've got a little bit of, of a delay in there. And the, it's a single delay, so it plays one note, one eighth behind, and I've got the uh, dry at 78, so they, they wet uh, the single note that comes back as a lower level. Okay, so that's the delay that I've got set up on that sound. So if we go back into the pattern sequencer and play that. There we go. And if we add in the drums. All right, good. Next is the iconic synth pad slash sound. So let's have a look at our zone again and is the bright pad. And that's what we're gonna be playing if I can get around my camera here. Okay, so this song is in B flat minor. And that is what we are using for that main note. The first one is actually this. So if we take a B minor and then we add a seventh in there, that's our first note. And let's uh, bring that down one inversion there. So there's our first chord right there. And there's only, actually only two chords. So the first one is a B flat minor and the, the next one is an E flat major. But we're not playing this, we're actually playing that with a uh, fourth, I believe, yes. So this is the note, we're, this is the chord we're playing. So let's bring that down one inversion and we'll bring it down one more inversion and there's the second note we're playing so we can see it's a E flat major with a fourth uh, second inversion and then a, a B flat minor with a seventh also in second inversion underneath that we're playing a B B flat in octaves and then F and then an E flat, F, B. So we've, what that comes out to is. So th that's all we're playing for the, the 
lead sound. Uh, let's record that in place. So we'll go back to our pattern sequencer. So we've got it set up to record. We're gonna go in real time and we're just gonna play what we're gonna play. Nice. Okay, so that's that sound. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have the, oh, a choir, the choir sound. So the, the choir sound is very simple. It's just also a B flat minor chord, but it's second inversion. So let's record that. All right, so let's go back into our pattern sequencer for that. And we are going to record that. And we're not actually gonna do real time. Let's do a step record on this. So we'll just play the note, the chord once. And then we're just going to tie it all the way through the rest of the sequence. So it just holds it. There we go. Uh, now if we play that, if I can hit the button. And then we've got one sound left, and that is this JP812 sound. And that is just this um, A flat down to F. So let's just do the real time record for that. So we'll get into the pattern and we'll hit record. All right, so we've got all our different parts set up in here. Let's play this back and see if I can manage to not get a copyright strike.
That's it. That's my tribute to Underworld and Dark Train on the Roland Phantom. Uh, I hope you found that entertaining or informative. Uh, you could tell I was having some trouble with the uh, pattern sequencer, um, starting and stopping the individual parts. Several times I went to hit the uh, item and the screen thought I was actually hitting the zone at the top and it zipped me back into the zone editor. Uh, fortunately, you can return from there and hopefully catch it before it, it starts, uh, before you actually miss your cue. Um, that said, you can also set up groups and songs. So technically, you could take all these different pieces and do what I was doing, but do it in an automated fashion. So everything you could do, you could program into a song and have it play the entire song start to finish without ever actually touching the screen or pressing a button. You just hit play and away it goes. That's a function of the Phantom and it's something that it can do in its pattern sequencer. If you like this type of video, you want to see more like it, let me know in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions, comments, corrections, uh, or just take five seconds, click like and leave a quick comment. Hey, I like your video. Hey, you're playing the wrong chords, whatever. It really helps me when you do that because it, it kicks the YouTube algorithm into high gear when you leave comments and likes like that. And it ends up showing my videos to other synth nerds like us. And of course, if you hit subscribe, you get notifications whenever I post another video, duh. You're on YouTube, you didn't know that, but hey, why haven't you subscribed yet? Click that subscribe button. Click that little bell. I know you want to come back. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.